the slow walk. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. All right, hello everyone. This is going to be episode nine, and we're gonna pick up right where we left off. So we just saw Eric save Dr. Grant. And so now in this next scene, we see the tides have changed. And instead of reptilians hiding underground, humans are instead hiding like rats underground or vermin. And so they uh, begin to speak. Dr. Grant thanks Eric. And Eric replies with, you know who I am. Dr. Grant lets him know that his parents are here, both of them. And then Dr. Grant says, Surprise what people can do when they, when they have to. You'd be surprised what people can do when they have to. Look what is going on in the world today with people in Sri Lanka overthrowing their government and now in the Netherlands with uh, the Dutch farmers fighting for their right to farm against the WEF and uh, the nitrogen shortages. So in this next scene, the light begins to fade. But new and young minds with fresh perspectives will be the beacon to reignite humanity's aspect of care for one another and other species. Harmony. <coughs> then uh, Eric recognizes who Dr. Grant is. They get into a conversation. They start to share a meal together. They're talking about uh, Dr. Grant's books, Malcolm's books. Then Dr. Grant makes a comment. He's saying, I have to tell you, I'm astonished you've lasted eight weeks on this island. And Eric replies with, Is that all it's been? It's only been eight weeks. Surviving isolated among hostile reptilians? It seems like an eternity. So he can't actually believe that that's, that's the little amount of time that's passed. Listen. So because he's been isolated away from civilization for so long and hasn't had a lot of stimulus, he's able to hear very subtle sounds to help him survive, so it's easier from being out in the wilderness for so long. Versus Dr. Grant, who just arrived at the island and just came from civilization. Copies. And so she, he hears danger, and he closes up his um, shelter. Now the scene changes, uh, Billy is looking for Dr. Grant, Billy, Mr. and Mrs. Kirby are in the trees, and Mr. and Mrs. Kirby are just pondering the life that they had together when they had their son together, all of the things that they used to do together. So like Dr. Sadler said in the very first movie, the only thing that matters in life are the people we love. And so you see this light right here between them showing that they're enlightened or that they have a higher understanding of interspecies relationships. They understand where they are. They have respect for the unknown and the supernatural. So the next morning comes. Dr. Grant and Eric they leave their shelter. Billy and the Kirby's descend from the trees. So when they descend from the trees, they're descending in frequency or vibration for interaction with these reptilians. Then Eric and Dr. Grant see a boat in the distance, and they start to head down to the river. He 
figures all the big dinosaurs are in the center of the island, right? So here, Billy, Mr. and Mrs. Kirby have to proceed and head to the coast. And right here, they're reminiscent of the masses who are looking for a leader, who are looking to be led like sheep. And so he's asking Billy for confirmation, right? Right? Sure. And then it's the blind leading the blind. He's like, uh, yeah, sure, I, I guess. So Eric has a brand new raptor claw, meaning he must have had an encounter with the reptilian Dracos while he's been on the island alone. Dr. Grant asks if he's explored any of the island, and he said, I figured if anyone came looking for me, they would start at the compound. So Eric said he tried to stay close to old human settlements, settlements in order to be found easier by other humans, other people. And when Dr. Grant mentions that we have to go to the coast or go to the river, sure. and Eric replies with, the closer you get to water, the bigger things get. Meaning, very subtly, but a lot of truth, big things exist in water that we cannot even fathom. No pun intended. So they continue to hike out of the woods, and Eric begins to hear a familiar sound in the distance. The phone. He said, that's my dad's satellite phone. And he says, Kirby, Peyton, Tile, Plus, in Westgate. In Westgate. In Westgate? So they, the reptilians, have access and control to the Western countries, United States, United Kingdom, Australia. So it starts to lure Eric in the direction of the sound. Then his parents hear him in the distance, and now they're able to be lured as well. So this shows that any age or gender can be lured. So now they finally meet up with one another. And they're like, how did you find us, by the way? And he's like, I heard the phone. And he's like, what do you mean? Well, where, where is the phone? And he's like, well, I gave it to Nash. Nash was the black guy who was eaten a few episodes ago. And then... They look up when they hear the, t the ringtone again. So the phone is actually in his stomach because he ate the pilot. But now the reptilian is using that piece of technology to lure the humans deeper into the wilderness and isolate them. Then the reptilian chases them. They flee past a human barrier, a man-made structure, with barely any sacred geometry. So, these barriers might be able to temporarily hold reptilians back, but not permanently. So they think they're safe, and the reptilian bursts through. So now, our main characters are going to seek refuge in this temple. In this building that looks like a temple. And just from a, from a brief glimpse, it looks like it has sacred geometry built into it. Meaning it's aligning with the secrets of the universe. So the theory I have is that they run into this temple style structure and the reptilian's able to, unable to break through because of the sacred geometry and the way the building is built. Because if you think about it, these are all rust, this is all rusted metal. But still, the reptilian can't break through. So the only thing I'm thinking is, very subtly, it's sacred geometry barrier. Just like the pyramids of Giza.
And then finally, the reptilian gives up on its meal, and you can just see the anxiety, the fear, the trauma. And now everyone, these uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kirby with their child, they're relieved. Dr. Grant is relieved. And now they're all coming back to the situation like, oh my goodness. And that will conclude this episode. Thank you for watching.